Starting up in round two, we have the Pirate Faction versus the Dynasty Faction. And in a complete opposite of last time, the Pirate Faction was on board. We only have one Bomb Thrower, because it's matched up against the Monk. I mean, that's a one for one. We do have one Dragon Zero, which can definitely do work if it isn't killed by the one cannon for the 1v1. Captain does not win that 1v1 against the Watcha. And then we have 5 Monkey King versus 4 Pirate Queen in the back. Let's get it done. Arrows are going to rain down. The Blunderbusses are going to be fully fine. The Dragon is dead. The Dragon's already down. So it's going to be on the Watcher to try and rain down pain on the rest of the Pirate Faction. And to hopefully not murder all of its Monkey Kings. Monkey King putting in work against the Pirate Queen though. Even jumping up after her. We may have one dead, I don't know. It's still so hard to tell which ones are the real Monkey Kings and which ones aren't. We definitely have a bunch of Monkey Kings dead, because, I mean, I think we only have one left, and it's this one. And he just got kicked. Okay, Firework Archers and the Huacha. What a dodge from the Firework Archer. Oh, we still have a Monkey King in the back. Okay, that's... That's a win for them. Let me make sure that the Monkey King doesn't get stuck this time. One win to the Dynasty Faction. Um, Dragon. I think your team would greatly appreciate it if you weren't uh, stuck like that. Or you get one, you get murdered by the Huacha. Let me slightly off-center this dragon. Actually, if I do that, I have to slightly off-center the cannon as well. That's the whole thing. Is that the cannon's supposed to 1v1 the dragon? Or try to. So now they're in line again. So if the cannon just shoots straight, it would kill the dragon. They're bringing the dragon closer. That was like one of the worst things I think I've ever seen. One of the worst misplays I think I've ever seen. God, pirates need bigger brains than that. I think the harpooner that did it lived as well. This one right here. Pirate queen down. And it's gonna be this again. It's gonna the watch is gonna mow down the pirate queen. There you go. And that's a dynasty win. Second one. Next up, the Renaissance versus Dark Faction. It's Tempest Lich and Void Monarch. Versus Musketeer and the Rage Tank. Let's be real here. The Jousters might do something, but overall, it's not gonna be the same. Tempest Lich needs to put in some serious crowd control work. Mad Mechanic could as well, I suppose, but there's only, what, two of them? I think they're both dead. Void Monarchs are getting in there now, already killed, like, all the Musketeers. One of them is transformed already. One can one Da Vinci tank down. They haven't even all transformed. They teleported into the tank. That's not fair. <laughs> Dark wins. Wouldn't you love it when numbers almost perfectly work out? 15,000 on both sides. Almost the same number. 38 versus 39. Spooky versus Viking faction. Reapers are gonna put base of work here. So there's three of them. And the only unit on the Viking team that survives the tentacle, the uh, the Reaper wings, is the Yarl. I mean, with the addition of Candleheads and everything? So, 
They just got a scythe wave apart, these guys. Oh my god, the <laughs> ice just murdered them all. What an ice arena. And I think it's just ice archers now. There you go. Spooky wins game one. How about game two? That's... It's a bit of an issue. Whoops. The Berserkers get caught up on the Ice Archers, and that means, like, both, both of those unit types don't matter. Stick it. He did not stick it, not even slightly. We almost had a Grim Reaper chain reaction. Now it's just these two Jarls versus the rest of the spooky fashion, aka all these skeleton archers. Okay, well the pumpkin gap will kill them. That's gonna be a spooky 2-0 dub. How did this end up being almost even numbers at 85 versus 88? Huh? <laughs> well, anyway, there isn't much more to talk about other than the 45 lasso versus 37 ballista matchup with the addition of 16 Deadeye on the Wild West side. Wild West versus Ancient, let's go. And I was actually sitting here thinking like, oh, the Gunslingers might matter. There's like six of them. They're, they're throwing the Ballistas themselves at them. Now, if everything is gone, Ballista wins the 1v1 against Deadeye, and there's way more than 16 Ballista. Oh, they're dodging. The quick draws are dodging the Ballista Bolts, somehow. Quick draw is being such a good tank for the Deadeye. They got this. Yeah. Game two. Because if the quick draw don't do all that dodging and stuff, then, I mean... Or even, like, desync their dodging. We only lost, like, seven Ballista. Oh, one did- one of the, uh, lassos actually just got through. There's so many- The Wild West faction has such a good matchup against the Ballista. Deadeye can one-shot it if, like, something tanks it. AKA the Cactus, who's completely immune. Lasso is fast, is two units, and is ranged. Then the Quick Draw dodges. Yeah, this is done. Wild West takes that 2 0 dub. I don't even know what to say to this matchup. We got 40 healers in the back. Maybe I should move them up a bit. Hold on a minute. Yeah, I didn't know how far back I was going to go with the medieval faction placement. So, anyway, 20 knights is a lot of knights. I mean, they do have to go against 13 Divine Arbiters, which is not easy. Radiant Glaze is going to tear through, like, the Archer line if they get to it. One Righteous... One uh, Celestial Aegis does not matter in the slightest. Catapults could do work. I mean, they they have a really hard hill to climb. It's like 3v1. If there's anyone that can climb a hill like this, it would probably be the Light Faction. Oh, some of the Divine Arbiters are being taken out by the, uh... Uh... You know, uh, Catapult Shots. As long as they don't one-shot the King here... Yeah, as long as they don't one-shot the King, 40 healers should be enough to keep him alive. 
Now, if only they could overheal. None of the Divine Arbiters died in the first catapult shot. That's good. How about the second one? Oh, a few Divine Arbiters have died. Um, They just nuked their own Righteous Powers. Chronomancer transformed. Well, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful healer ball. Where are you going? What's over here? Where were you going? Oh wait, that's gonna be a 2-0 medieval wing. Oh. <laughs> 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 Um, we have, um, uh, Trot <laughs> versus Shit. <laughs> Alright, um, I mean, that's, that's a lot of crows they have to deal with, and they'll one-shot everything. That's not the Mammoth. Uh, the Harvesters are gonna tear through, like, the melee units. So there's a bunch of stoners there, but I don't think they're gonna do that much. How much win the Scarecrow do? Still has it! Let We're following this one. We're following this one into battle. Come on, Mammoth. Oh my god, it's so many crows, it's lagging. No, no, don't die. No, don't die. Everything has been crushed underneath these mammoths. Uh, this is called the simulation map, Rep. No! You glorious, just a creature. This is the one I usually use. Um, what what happened? Yeah, uh, former faction one. Okay, game two. Yeah, this is the map I usually use to run tournaments. Anyway, that's wrap in a box. She's another streamer. I have her. In, I have her as a unit. The doll that mammoth meat just barreling down on you. These Scarecrows should be, for the most part, safe. Because they can't actually get, like, stomped. Because they hover above the ground where the shockwave happens. So the Mammoth has to swing around the tusks and everything to deal damage to the Eden. Or flatten them like that. And the Tribal Faction wins. Game 2. How about Game 3? No, no wacky spawns like that Mammoth. Everything just goes flying. And I mean, the crows already fly, so... You know, Arvester also probably has a favorable matchup against Mammoth, but not in a 6v3. And that's... that's a... that's a farmer faction dub. <laughs> <laughs>